to announce the uh, official candidacy of two uh, people who will be running for the Board of Supervisors. As far as we know, uh, these are the first two announced Occupy, pro-Occupy, pro-99% pro candidates in Sacramento and maybe the state. So uh, the first person, or actually the first person is going to be Gary Blenner. Uh, he's a high school teacher at Rio Americano. And then Jeff Kravitz, who's one of the Sacramento Occupy uh, pro bono attorneys. Uh, Gary's going to speak first. Thank you very much, Chris. Good morning. Uh, my name is Gary Blenner. Uh, as Chris said, I teach U.S. History and American Government at Rio Americano High School. And I'm here today to stand as a candidate for the Sacramento County Board of Supervisors, District 4. Ever since the housing bubble in California began to burst in 2006, the Sacramento area economy has been in a downward spiral ever since. People have ended up losing their homes, their jobs, and their livelihood. In 2007, the top 1% of all income earners in the United States made just 25% of all income. That is more than the bottom 50% of wage earners. 1% here, 50% there, but for the top wealthy, that is apparently not enough. The percentage of income going to the top 1% nearly tripled in the 1970s. All over this country, people are angry and frustrated. It is true all over America, especially here in Sacramento County. But one of the reasons people are angry and frustrated is they are working incredibly hard. In Sacramento, there are people who don't work one job or two jobs. In some cases, they're working three and four jobs trying to cobble together a meager income and living, just in order to support their families. While people are working harder and harder, in, ca in many cases, their income is going down. The fact is 80% of all new income earned from 1980 to 2005 has gone to the top 1%. It explains why the American people are feeling angry as they should be. They are working hard, but they're not going anyplace. In some cases, as in the case of the poor and the elderly, their standard of living has actually gone down. The question we have to ask ourselves here today is what do we expect from our elected officials? And I maintain the argument that while governing includes choosing and prioritizing, it is clear from the record that our opponents, Roberta McGlashan and Susan Peters, have chosen to support the interests of the top 1%. They have chosen to uphold the needs of greedy corporate developers and other wealthy interests in the Sacramento area above and beyond those to defend the people that they were sworn to support. They have voted to cut back public services to the poor, the elderly, and the disabled while continuing to divert millions of dollars of unnecessary construction projects that line the pocket of these greedy developers. That is why I say enough is enough. It is time for a change of direction on the Sacramento County Board of Supervisors. One of the things I'd like to accomplish is to make government more accountable to the 99%. That is why my running mate, Jeff Kravitz, and myself intend to embark on a series of 99% town hall meetings over the next few months to listen to the needs of the people of our districts and ask them what public services they want to see restored and what they want to see done on their behalf. I believe, for example, that the $98,000 salary that the Board of Supervisors make for themselves is way too much and the time of amount and energy that they, that they put forward is energy that is wasted. Think about this. There are plenty of states in our country with populations larger than Sacramento County in, where there's, in which their state legislatures actually make less money and they work less. In many states, they only meet maybe 60 days every two years and they call it a day. Now just think about all the savings that that would have uh, for this county. That could be as much as a quarter of a million dollars. Change will only come about if we, the 99%, begin at the grassroots level and begin to stand up for ourselves, it's more than necessary to just occupy Wall Street or the banks or parks. The next stage has to be to occupy the government. I'm running for office not to punish success, as some people say, but to punish excess. It's time for the people to stand up for themselves. If we all pull together, there will be a brighter tomorrow for Sacramento's future. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Good what he said. Uh, I'm Jeff Kravitz and I think that uh, some people in the area may have known that I've been involved in defending the rights of the Occupy uh, movement 
in Sacramento, uh, which is a good example, the way the government reacted to it, of the way that this government in Sacramento and throughout the United States wastes taxpayer money on unnecessary prosecutions. I'd have to congratulate Jan Scully that she so far did not go along with that prosecution. So right now, in this county, we are faced with all sorts of dilemmas, and we are faced with the, one of the part of the problem is that we have a leadership that is essentially identical year after year after yes. year after year. If you look back for the last few elections, many of the Board of Supervisors have been re-elected because they weren't even yeah. challenged, and yet it's local government that has the most direct effect on people's everyday lives. Right now, in this county and in this state and in this whole country, we need creative leadership to work directly with the people of this county, with the small business owners throughout the third district, where you see commercial property after commercial property that is shut down, that can't be rented out, and we have a county board of supervisors that is constantly interested in new developments. Each one of these new developments is cannibalizing the ability of the people who already own property to go forward and make profit off of their, their businesses. Nothing wrong with profit, nothing wrong with economic growth. But that growth has to be channeled towards the people in this community who are living here. Instead, we have a government that seems to be obsessed with large developers, large corporations, which have absolutely nothing to do with this county. A prime example of it, which is going on right now, it affects both the county and the city, is the idea of selling off the parking lots in the city. One of those parking lots they want to sell off is right there. It's owned by the county. They want the county to give that parking lot to the city so the city can sell it off as part of their plan of taking money away from the taxpayers, which is what would happen because all of parking revenue goes into the general fund and using it to finance a giant white elephant that they're calling an arena downtown. All of this is because local government is not thinking about the needs of the, lo of the people in this locality. That's what we're going to change. We want to bring the people into the county. As Gary just said, one of the ideas we're proposing is that the Board of Supervisors meet at night, make the job like it is in many other counties and so forth, a, a, essentially a part-time job. The salaries would be less, but the meetings would be more open. There would be more community involvement. Just this week, the Board of Supervisors has apparently voted to spend a million dollars in funds that they're going to receive, money that could go to the general fund, to make the, the council chambers nicer. The council chambers are usually empty. People don't even know what's going on at, at the votes that are happening there, and they're going to spend more money on that. We have to look into all of these issues, and every decision has to be made as to how it affects the vast majority of people who are living in this county. When we spend money in this county, when the government spends money on development and so forth, it's much better, in my opinion, to spend to give $100,000 grants to 100 people rather than spending $10 million on one project, which is what goes on perpetually in the Sacramento region in this mad race to make us some kind of major uh, urban center like Los Angeles or San Francisco. That's not going to happen. What we need is a local government that it understands what this community is all about, hears public services and all, sort, all programs towards developing the small business infrastructure of this county, and that's what we're going to do when we are elected this year. Thanks. I don't have no hands. <laughs> Any questions? No, that's a, that's a good question. Right now, from resources in society. 
there's certain, there, you know, obviously it takes money to run a campaign. It probably takes a little bit less than people think. We're talking about county government here, and we are right now raising money. I, I did my first what we call money bomb the other day, and we've started raising money. We're going to continue to raise money from people and so forth in small donations and, and bring forth a very, very viable campaign. I assure you, this is going to be an extremely serious public campaign. We're going to be on TV, and we're going to fight every single day of the week. I have no intention of losing. Where will the money come from? I mean, do you have criteria uh, based on what donations you'd accept? Would you take money from businesses or corporations, or are you only accepting money from individuals? Well, I'm only accepting money from individuals, and just to sort of piggyback onto Jeff's point, I know that the incumbents have a lot of money, and like he was saying, they're in the pockets of the developers and corporate interest. If for a movement to take off and be successful, it has to come from average ordinary citizens. Um, I'm accepting donations of no more than 500 per individual, no more than 1,000 from an organization. I will not accept money from developers. I will not accept money from corporate interests. It cannot be a movement for the 99% if we're in bed with those that are trying to undermine their interests. Well, uh, as he stated, I mean, those are those, those are the donation limits, actually, that there are and so forth. You know, the word corporate, this is where I'm slightly difficult to hear. There's people who have corporations who have small businesses, and of course, I have no problem accepting donations right. from those people if they want to make businesses. I, I, I don't think I'm going to be faced with the dilemma of Wells Fargo making a donation to my campaign. I just have a strong, strong feeling about that. You know, but if there are people who own small businesses who've been hampered by uh, government uh, planning, you know, I, people know this, so I'm not going to certainly make it a secret. I represented the interest of people in this county who uh, had a legal right to get medical marijuana and I represented the interest of uh, people who own property who rented their property to um, people who are trying to run medical marijuana dispensaries. Obviously though those are a form of, of a commercial enterprise. And you know it was fascinating to hear to the Board of Supervisors attitude towards these people, mostly family owned businesses, a lot of people inherited property and so forth, trying to rent out the property. No one in the Board of Supervisors, they did not care that their property had been empty for years. They had no interest. It made no difference to them whether or not their property was rented out or not, whether or not these, these, these local people are making money. And then you see it happen again and again. People come up with these high in the sky. I mean, I, I realize it's, it, 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 it affects both the city and the county, but you know the, the arena is an example of it. The pie in the sky development projects, which have nothing to do with the nature of this county and what's happened all the time. So I'm I, I absolutely going to reach out to small business owners to, because we want to have a county government that allows local business to grow and develop. As I just said, when the government is spending money, it has to get out of this idea that when governments spend money, they spend $200 million. Governments can be in the business of giving grants to small businesses to help local entrepreneurs develop. There's nothing wrong with that. That's, that's what they can't do and so forth. But we're gonna raise money and we're gonna fight this campaign. And I'm telling you, the powers that be, they better look out because we're coming and we're gonna run a serious campaign because people are fed up. I mean, look, the people on the Board of Supervisors right now, they are the people who approve the development. They're there, they're the same people. That's who we're running against. They approve the developments that are now empty. They approve those developments which cannibalize all of the commercial space throughout the 4th District and throughout the 3rd District. You drive down the street and you will see empty storefront after empty storefront after empty storefront and then down the block there's a new development. Now who thought of that? Those people are in office. The people who approved the new housing developments in Sacramento, which inflated the which inflated the market and then caused the crash, those people are saying, elect us again. We caused the problem, now we're gonna solve it. That doesn't make any sense. We need to clean house in Sacramento with new creative leadership that comes from the grassroots in this area. You see any irony in the supporters of a decidedly anti-government movement now running for government office? No, there would be, uh, it, it would be ironic if people who were involved in, 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 in the demonstrations in the streets and whatnot did not see that they needed to get involved in running the government. 
let, let, let me say this. When I am elected, I am I'm certain I'll, people will not like everything I do. And you know what they should do? They should protest. And one thing I'm not going to do is I'm not going to say the police should go and arrest those people because they're protesting. I'm not going to waste it. Say, waste money like that. We have, in a democratic society, you've got people who are elected to office, they have a job to do. The people have a job to do out in the streets protesting. So you protest, you vote, you petition, you participate in politics. Democracy is not a spectator sport. You gotta get involved. So everybody who's involved in the Occupy movement, involved in protest movements, they've gotta, they, they've gotta get in here and work on things to bring about real change. If the next step for the Occupy movement is to occupy the government. Right. That has to be the next step. Uh, people can protest in the streets all they want to. And like Jeff, I it, again, when I'm in office, if people are unhappy with what they do, if that's part of democracy. Uh, it, it's part of the process. So the point being that, that for, for a grassroots movement to take off, yes, it's important to organize uh, out on the streets, but the next step has to be to occupy the government. And I don't accept the premise that the Occupy movement is completely opposed to the idea of uh, government policy. Government policy is necessary. It is the government policy, the people, the, the parasites who actually feed off of our corporate interests that are responsible for getting us into this mess in the first place. This is a nonpartisan race, so we're running as nonpartisan candidates. Right. Technically, you have to. I, 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 if I'm seeking the support of, of a political party. I, I'm trying to build a broad coalition. It, it political party does not matter to me. I mean, I have uh, supporters in the Democratic Party, Green Party, Peace and Freedom Party, Independents. Uh, this is a broad coalition for change. Great answer.